most of us here are girls, and I guess it applies to guys as well. And uh, I go to an all-girls school, and girls my age tend to be a little hormonal, that's appropriate to say. And so we get in a ton of fights. And I've been in fights, and I have been bystanders, and I have been the victim of been basically in every situation. And actually, one just happened recently this weekend. I was at a basketball game with my friends, and they coached the B team for my school, and so it was a bonding experience, and so they uh, brought their B team along with them. They got in a huge fight, and it's not necessary to go into the details because it's not really appropriate. But um, stuff like that happens, and they were both my good friends, and I didn't really want to side with them, so I just listened to their input. And um, one of them, my friends, my really good friends, she gets really aggressive and she gets really into it and uh, I, I didn't really feed her more coal, I guess. But then the other one, like she was really upset because she felt bad because she left the team to hang out with the boys even though she was supposed to be the head coach. And um, I just told her to apologize to the other one and they worked things out, which was good because if they hadn't, then it would have leaked into school and it, the teachers would have gotten involved and that has happened for grade eight. It's probably the worst year. We got in a lot of trouble. And, um, which was good because they resolved it. And when you're the victim, you can't, it's hard to defend yourself, I guess. And, um, especially as girls who are really vicious, there's a lot of tears. There's a lot of crying. And, um, yeah. And it can really hurt people's feelings, but then we all become friends again. Especially like spreading rumors and stuff is not a good thing because it really hurts your feelings and I know what it feels like. And I personally, I don't like it when people falsely judge me. I don't like when people judge me at all. And I like to stand up for myself and I get really vocal, but some people aren't like that. And it's hard. share a little bit about when I was a bully, because I guess being bullied didn't always surprise me that I got to the point. Because like, I never thought, it wasn't at the time that I thought I was doing anything wrong, and then it wasn't until after what I talked to this person, you know, after the fact that I realized that, you know, what I had done, and then reflect upon my own actions, what I had done. So, and it really bothered me, because like, wait a second, I was in his shoes. I never thought I'd get to that point. But I guess the thing, when I went to university, I made a, I made kind of a bunch of new friends. And it was really cool and fun. And I went from being like one of the losers to one of the cool kids. And, you know, girls actually looked at me. It was nice. When you go to an all girls school like the Mount, like 85% of the people there are girls, 15 are guys. All of a sudden, it's like, hey. Anyway, so tell me another lesson that I'll share about another time. Uh, so, anyways, I met this guy in my third year of university. His name was Sean. It was his first year. He's a nice kid, you know. But he really tried hard. Like, Sean always wanted to be liked by everyone. So he's like, I, you know what I mean? Like, guy comes up and, like, you're in line at the, and, you're, and you're, like, quarter short buying your breakfast. And he's like, you know, I'll give you, like, $3. Sean was like that, always over the top, trying to be really nice to everyone because he wanted to be one of our friends. And it's like, okay, Sean, we get it, yeah. And for some reason, just, I don't know, it was like talked or walked or something, like, reflecting upon it, he didn't do anything that was really that bad. But he just became that guy that we made fun of. And we weren't really mean about it. It wasn't like I was all up in Sean's grill and I was like, Hey, Sean, you're such a loser. Stop it. I was like, it was more like Sean would leave the room and then we'd be like, Man, why is that guy keep hanging out with us? He's such a loser. Oh, gosh. I just want to kick him right upside the head. Oh, I hate that guy. So and nice. anyways, it, it went on, and it wasn't until like a year afterwards, I, so I wasn't going to church or anything, and I kind of was missing something in my life, and it wasn't until I started reflecting upon this and preparing for this that I realized what I was missing was Jesus. I didn't have any relationship with Jesus. 
this, and I kept feeling like, there's something missing. And so I got madder and angrier, and I, and I would just lash out in stupid ways. And Sean was one of the people that hurt fell from that. Anyway, Sean moved at the end of his first year of university, my third, and he called me. I we were his friends. He thought we were his friends. Uh, and I had gone to World Youth Day, and I kind of like realized said, Sean, what a tool I was. And I apologized. And John was like, it was until he, he started I said, tell me, did I really hurt your feelings? And he told me all the stuff he did. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really that person. Anyways, it really gave me a sense of regret. And that's what I wanted to share with you. I mean, I don't, I do, I've done a lot of things in my life. Some things I'm not very proud of. But really, I can probably count on one hand things I actually regret. And my relationship with Sean at the university when he lived here was one of them. Um, the other thing I would say is repentance. You know, if you've been a bully, if you've done something that really hurts somebody's feelings, two things you can do. One is apologize to them, and one is go to the cycle of reconciliation and reconcile yourself with God and the human. So that's what I want to share. Um, yeah, so really, um, just be aware of what you're doing, know that you can